So I want to do some introductions real quick. So if you're grabbing a cold one, listen, we'd love to have you a part of the conversation. I know my voice travels, but we'd love to have you up close so we can point out some things so you really understand what's going on. So first off, I'd like to introduce Toronto Fire Service, Rob and Salome. Oh, you nailed it. I nailed it. My friends from the north, I love it. Division Chief of the Mechanical Equipment and Asset Management for the Toronto Fire Service. Brother, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks, man. Wow, that voice sounds good. Bro. You got the voice, I'm telling you. And then I'd like to introduce Roger McCord. I got it? You got it. I got it. Roger is the Senior Director of Product Development for Rev Group. This is his project. He's very proud of this. The Rev Group is very proud of the innovation that is happening in the fire service when it comes to apparatus and pushing this job forward. So what I'd like to do today is facilitate the conversation between Rob and Roger. And so why don't we go down this road? Let's talk about the reasons behind the electric fire apparatus. Okay, the, the main reason behind it is to be able to give fire departments an opportunity to see what electrification can mean in their operation. So we've got lots of beautiful diesel-powered trucks around here, but the world's changing, you know, uh, governments are doing things, and so we want to be able to give that opportunity for people like uh, Rob and his group in Toronto to, to start understanding what it's going to mean to be uh, electrified in the future. I love that. Rob, talk to me a little bit about Toronto Fire Service. You have two of these apparatus on the order right now with the Rev Group. I do, and I look forward to it. All I can say is I wish we could get them soon. Well, that's the name of the game right now across the board on, on everyone. Yep. But I'd like to say this, right? When we talk about electric fire apparatus, I think there's a lot of misconceptions, a lot of misnomers, and unknowns. And like in the fire service, with traditional values within the fire service, the unknown is vilified, and we don't like to talk about the unknown. We're afraid of it. When in fact, we should be embracing it. If you guys think about the fire ground, what that looks like today, we're talking about fans and saws, and lights and extrication equipment are now electric. When you walk this show and look at the loose equipment vendors that are here, you're looking at electric tools. Why do we not want electric fire apparatus on the fire apparatus on the fire ground? Why are we scared of it? We need to turn that conversation around. If we can trust firefighters to go to the roof, we can trust outside vent firefighters to remove window bars with power, you know, battery-powered equipment. We can rely on electric fire trucks. And that's what we're here to do today, is to talk about why that is important. So let's start talking about some of the components of the truck, Roger. Yeah, sure. So we talk, you, know, you mentioned to begin with 100% electric. And you know, my claim is it's 100% electric because starting right behind you there, it's got a 1,000 uh, horsepower capable motor tuned down to 500 horse. And it's an electric motor, and it drives the truck and it pumps the truck. All in electric, there's no connection between any diesel uh, engine and that motor. Having said that, we do have a diesel engine in here, and that's the backup. So when we our batteries get down to that 15% state of charge, you're out doing something, you can't get back to the station to be able to plug in, that diesel motor starts up, there's a generator there, and then it starts powering, uh, pushing power back into the batteries. I love it. Thank you, Robert. So the important information there, and here's what I'm hearing, right? It's like, as a regular guy, I'm on social media all the time trying to educate and push the innovation forward with this job, and I'm thinking like, whoa, what if it breaks down? Like, it's electric, right? What if we lose charge and so on? There's safeguards built in. Toronto Fire Service is a busy, a very big, and very busy fire department. You definitely are. You need to be less scared of it. We're safe. I know the conversation of what's happening, and that's why I'm impressing upon people to really understand that we need to learn about the apparatus. So let me tell you, the number one thing you do not need to worry about, I can tell you, Roger did a fabulous study for us, for one of our music stations that does at least 25 runs a day. He went back to the station and plugged it in, I think it was 97% of the time, it ran full electric. To the point that I asked Roger, do we not need to worry about the fact that the season engine is never going to run? So we need to put in some kind of electric program to make sure it does work on speeds. So you're sitting at a call pumping for two and a half hours of draft that we never do. From a hydrant all the time, I guess, and it gives me three and a half hours probably. 
Yeah. Again, absolutely, and that's where we need to be telling people the facts, the bullet points of what this truly, what this apparatus can truly do. Let's talk about the abilities of it, right? What the Red Group is offering is a standardized engine with an electrical component, correct? So talk about the front, rear, and pump modules as well. Okay, so one of the things we wanted to do is create a uh, electrified fire truck that was still North American and had all the same kind of components that you're used to. So starting with that electric motor, there's a short drive shaft back to the pump. It's a, this particular pump is a Watrous slip shaft pump, just like you'd have in the standard pumper. Uh, we could put a Darley in there, we could put a Hale in there, doesn't matter. So right behind that, from, from the back of that electric motor to the back of the truck, it's exactly what you're used to seeing in a North American pump. Likewise, the pump panel, you see these have um, all uh, standard mechanical control rods. Uh, you can easily put electric valves on there. You can use the same system if you were or if you wanted. Doesn't matter. Um, the, the back of the truck can be customized the way you want. Next, prop bus. And the new beef for us is exactly the same as our pump truck. It's no big deal. This one is open. We actually have a close cap. It's because people are so it's the same as you can use this truck as any normal truck for us. And that's the beauty of training with 3,000 firefighters. It's a ongoing training thing. It's easy and simple to use, like the same one that the better person used to use. Perfect course. Interesting conversation we had too in regards to that, because depending on the life cycle of the apparatus, how busy of a company it is. I wouldn't know what I'm speaking to you. I'm going to adjust. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? You know what I mean? Uh, sure, I think that I, I found out you've got an iPhone. I do. Okay, so if you go in, go your iPhone and you go, go into the uh, settings section, you can look and you'll find something called battery health. Okay? And, and when you buy the phone, it's going to say 100%. When I get my phone, it's always a hand-me-down for my wife and it's got 80%, right? <laughs> but it's still a good phone and it works well for me, right? So, um, at some point in time though, that, that health drops to the point where I don't have enough daytime running to meet my expectations, then I take it down to battery slots and I get a new battery. It's exactly the same technology as the, the batteries on this truck, and exactly the same thing's going to happen. You're going to start using the truck uh, when you get it, you got that whatever the uh, range is that you have new. Over the years, it's going to degrade a little bit because that's what lithium batteries do. And at some point in time, you're going to end up feeling like it doesn't meet your expectations anymore. That's when you have to sit down and, and uh, decide, am I, am I ready to change the batteries? They aren't going to quit. They don't stop. It's a very gradual process, and you can plan for that. Remember the worst case scenarios, the diesel engine goes on. Right. Not that big. Yeah, good infrastructure to allow for these types of apparatus. What do we need to be thinking about? Um, infrastructure, you're going to want, you, in fact, we don't want to sell this truck without uh, knowing that it's going to have a DC fast charger. So DC fast charger uh, push, pushes DC power right back into the batteries. All of the batteries, like every battery, it comes in direct current only. So you're pushing uh, 120 kilowatts back into the truck. You're doing that from 100% state of charge, or from zero up to 100% state of charge, uh, you can do that with a DC fast charger in about two hours and 15 minutes. So you can bring these batteries back up to full charge in that time. That's correct. Right. Excellent. Rob, anything on that? So I have the luxury of picking any of 84 fire departments to stick in this truck that I'd like to do. We are going to put them in the busiest ones we can because there's no point of parking in them. We delay them. But, uh, I've given them the decision of six or seven states to choose from just so that the power grid itself is there and it can be easy to connect. We have a lot of variables, so it's not very good. So, we're going to make the decision of the easiest to install that. Fantastic. I should be set with 84 fire halls in the Toronto Fire Service. So very big department. I love watching departments take some chances on innovation to push the job further. I think there's something about that. What were some of the considerations you had, Rob, just on a department level to determine that, hey, we want to try electric, we want to try something more green? Well, we're a very green city. We have a number of mandates for when our city has to be fully electric, 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 and we have a very easy decision to make. 
that's a bit of no brainer. If you ask me it's the responsibility of the large departments, whether we're global from COVID right now or not, it's a responsibility to test a new diagnosis like this. We have the capacity to do that. We have you know, 200 other trips to fill in this issue. It's a really easy thing for us to do. We actually made the sale of it. It's smart for us to do this. We're very green. I have a council right now saying that extra should plan out of $30 million. Why are we buying other things now? Well, that, that was all that's so green. I never talked about it. We just think that somebody who really likes to be that old guy who finds the spirit of trust in us. And now we're playing selective beauties. Yeah, it's very yeah. cool. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. Roger, some final things, maybe something I missed during this conversation. Jeremy, I would never accuse you of missing anything, but there are. I miss things all the time. It's back to my thing. I'd like to explore a little bit more because people do ask about my battery life. I just want to, uh, so I don't want to be a politician here, but I will say that. It's a little bit um, unknown as we go out into the world in battery life, but I think we can make some pretty general statements. So if you are a, um, so a, a smaller department that's not going to run so often, let's pick uh, two four to four runs a day, that kind of thing. Um, because the life of these batteries is completely dependent upon the amount of cycles they go through, a department like that is probably going to go 20 years before they ever have to think about changing them changing a battery. If you're a department like uh, Chief Ansalmi and you're talking about 24 runs a day, it's probably more like you know a seven year life. And if you're somewhere in between there, you're gonna fall somewhere in between that seven to uh, 20 year lifespan. Great, anything else that I missed? Did you, was so stupidly yes. pointed out that I never miss it in the <laughs> Okay, so Jeremy, you're a firefighter, right? Yes. Okay, so could you give me, uh, what's a typical uh, non-pumping run that you your department would, uh, would run? It could be medicals. Could yeah. Be, yeah. Okay, so you're going to start from your station, you're going to go out how far? Uh, district's nine square miles, so okay. it be with it. Okay, so let's say you're going to go out five miles, seven miles, and park, and how long are you going to stay on scene typically? You're probably back in within 45 minutes. Okay, so let's pretend that that's an hour long. You get you start the station, you go out, you come back. That's an hour. We're gonna call that the month. So, with the depending upon if you're in a very hot climate or hot cold climate, does that make the difference on keeping the batteries where we like to, them to be from a temperature standpoint? Um, you you would be able to expect anywhere from say nine to fifteen runs like that before the, you got down to a fifteen percent state of charge and the range extender came on automatically. If you're back in the station for say 15 to 20 minutes in between each of those runs, then you're gonna stay up at 100% state of charge all the time. And this is the information that I find very interesting, right? When we start talking about the actual facts and numbers of what an apparatus like this requires, needs, and how it performs, I think when you start diving into the data, you'll understand that it's a viable option and the next step in fire apparatus. And we cannot get caught up on the tradition of combustion and batteries and electric doesn't work with water. We need to be honest and have real conversations with facts involved. Great. So now the second, uh, my second question for you, you're out on, on a pumping run this time. You didn't tell me we were doing this question. Uh, sorry. Um, you're, you're out on a pumping run, you, you get to the, the fire, let's say it's a, a typical municipal house fire or something. Uh, what are you going to attack with? Uh, we're stretching a hand, it's three quarter right off the bat. We're going to be flown, okay. and then depending on the size of the fire, right? So multiple hand lines, etc. Okay. So can we get, can we agree on three hand lines, for instance? Sure. Okay. So three hand lines, about 750 GPM, 150 psi. You you work off a hydrant, I assume, most of the time. Sure. And can you count on 50 psi in your hydrant? Yes. Okay. Let's let's use that as our example. So you're going to leave the station. You're going to go out, hit it with three hand lines on the hydrant. Then you're probably talking somewhere between three and four hours of runtime on electric only with this unit. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So that's what I wanted to get out. Right. And I love that. Right. Again, real information. Practical information on how we operate and how the truck will perform. Don't, Don't forget, forget the spin-offs too. We're, we're, I don't know what it's produced by it, but you can figure it out. Brickware has added to that. You can just reach out and 
Yes. We barely get a year of these stories that it's sad to get two or three of them. Think of the noise of the I'm screaming away at the end of the time. Think of a number of electric companies that you can have a conversation like this in the middle of the See, it's talk to the people that are having a worst day of their life. Thanks. Very good point, Chief. Thank you for pointing that out. Rod, are there any last words? What else? Is there anything else that I missed along the way? Because we do have to talk about the defender as well. What else do you have? Uh, the last one is it's a it's a lot of, load of fun to drive. It's like a big electric golf cart. Very easy to, to drive, easy to pump. There's just a single switch up in the in the cab. You pull up to the scene and go from road to pump. You hop out, you push one button back here. The uh, electric motor starts spinning at sort of an idle rate. Hit your free, hit your free select and it'll go right up to, uh, to the pressure that you're looking for. Finally, the biggest noise you're going to hear is the water coming out of the nozzle at that point. Fantastic. Roger, thank you for that. Chief, any last words? Nothing other than looking forward to the project. If you're going to buy an electric truck, there's three great options. So, we're going to My guess is one of these days I'll be going to But, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me today, talking about the vector in the rep group. If anybody has more questions of information, please hold them aside after we walk around to the Wildland vehicle and ask your questions. Let's really dive in on the facts of what electrical fire apparatus can do on the American Fire Service today. Chief, thank you very much. Roger, thank you very much. Thank you.